welcome to um, this webinar. My name is Kim Hansen and I am Executive Director at Diabetes Canada. We're here today to talk to you about how those of you who are living with or affected by diabetes um, can be using your diabetes and accessing care during this uh, very extraordinary time we're all living through. Um, I'm really so thrilled to be joined today by Member of Parliament for Vaughan Woodbridge, MP Francesco Sorbara, um, and Dr. Monique Piersanti, an endocrinologist with Trillium Health Services in Mississauga. Thank you both so much for being here. Just Welcome. A few, a few quick housekeeping items before we uh, dive in. I just wanted to let our viewers know that we are recording this session so that um, people will be able to view it after the fact. It will be placed on Diabetes Canada's YouTube channel and we're doing it across social media so you can feel free to uh, view it or share it with any of your networks that uh, might be interested. Um, we have muted and turned off the video of the participants, but you can absolutely ask questions anytime using the chat function at the bottom of your screen. So we would certainly encourage you to type in a question at any time and we'll make sure to answer it. We've also got a couple questions that have been sent in to us by uh, viewers in advance of the session, so we'll cover those towards the end of our remarks. Today, um, we're going to be offering remarks in both English and Italian, thanks to uh, MP Sorbara and Dr. Piersanti. So I'm very grateful to you. Thank you so much. Um, we're going to be hearing key questions that, that MPs are hearing, that Diabetes Canada is hearing, about what's the relationship between diabetes and COVID-19, how can we access care during this pandemic, and how can we care for ourselves while we are uh, in, in physical distancing measures, maybe at home. So, MP Sorbara, let's start with you. Uh, diabetes is a large burden for many Canadians. Tell us about that and tell us how our government is helping people with diabetes through this pandemic. Uh, thank you, thank you, Kim, for that question. Thank you for hosting this webinar. Uh, diabetes is obviously something very, very, uh, that it, uh, impacts Canadians from coast to coast to coast and all communities and, and all, I don't wanna say all ages, but uh, largely older folks. Uh, but uh, its impact is being made uh, even more present uh, uh, these days. And I want to give a shout out, if I can, to my colleague, Sonia Sudhu, who has done a great job advocating uh, for folks, uh, individuals impacted by diabetes, raising awareness on di diabetes, especially within the South Asian community. I, I will go into Italian. I excuse any uh, mischaracterizations or mispronunciations of, uh, of Italian. There's some words here that I don't use uh, all the time when I'm speaking with my parents and and relatives, but we'll we'll give it a give it a best shot. Uh, so grazie Kim per per prima cosa. Vuol dire buongiorno a tutti ascoltatori e membri che sono insieme a noi oggi. Uh, sono Francesco Sorbara, deputato parlamentare di Vaughan Woodbridge, e sono sempre disponibile um, disponibile attraverso la mail Francesco Punto Sorbara Cocciola Parl dot GC dot CA. Il nostro canale sociale opera chiamando l'ufficio del circoscrizione. Uh, come Kim ha detto, il diabete è un grande peso per tante canadesi. Sappiamo che una persona su tre colpita da questa malattia. Il governo canadese è molto presente nel aiutare gli individui affettiti dai diabeti e affrontare la pandemia uh, COVID-19. Vorrei assicurarvi che il nostro governo federale è estremamente focalizzato a dare tutto il supporto necessario ai canadesi ad affrontare e superare con successo questa crisi Covid-19. Abbiamo creato parecchi programmi come il CERB e chi allargisce 2.000 dollari al mese perché ha perso il lavoro e non può lavorare perché ha affetto il Covid-19. Per gli anziani abbiamo aggiunto altri 2.5 uh, mil miliardi di, di dollari per GIS o World Security e per gli studenti, sta, cominciando stamattina, 9 milioni mil miliardi per aiutare tutte quelle che cose di Covid-19 non riescono a trovare il lavoro estivo. Dall'ufficio di Woodbridge, la mia squadra e io sono sempre a disposizione per tutti i residenti uh, qui a Vaughan. Il diabete è una cosa che me sa molto a cuore. Sappiamo che il diabete e pre-diabetes affigge un canadese ogni tre e per il sistema sanitario nazionale ha un costo per curarla di 30 milioni di dollari l'anno. 
basically, I think I just said there that diabetes has a huge cost on our healthcare system across Canada. Uh, we know largely it's preventable, and I'll, I'll leave it to the doctors on that front there. Uh, but we need to make sure Canadians are informed about how we can prevent diabetes and how we treat them uh, and so forth. E diabete è una fattore principale che scaturiscono la malattia cardiaca, insufficienza renale, la CTA e le amputazioni. I canadesi più vulnerabili sono in congruno, inclusi gli anziani, gli individui a basso rilevo e i membri della comunità etnica africana e anche gli indiani. Nonostante il Canada abbia un forte e solido sistema sanitario, abbiamo ancora tanto lavoro di fare per quanto riguarda la prevenenza e il costo associato per curare i diabeti. Il nostro governo federale continua a supportare i canadesi affetti da tale malattia se durante la pandemia Covid-19 con non. Vorrei notare che nel corso degli ultimi cinque anni abbiamo investito circa 300 milioni Uh, milioni per la cura di Diabeticon, più di 48 milioni per finanziare sulle nel 2018-2019. Io mi fermo qua e lascio la parola anche ancora a Kim. Grazie per, questa, per questo webinar e grazie per questa opportunità di parlare dei diabete che nel nostro comunità italo canadese è una grande una big concern per, per many Italian Canadians. Thank you so much, MP Sahara. Um, now I'd like to welcome Dr. Monique Piersanti, an endocrinologist with Trillium Healthcare Services in Mississauga. Dr. Piersanti, Canadians living with diabetes are wondering whether they're at greater risk uh, to COVID-19 because they live with pre-diabetes or diabetes. What would you tell them? Right, well, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, Kim and uh, Mr. Sorbero for spending time with us and also all the other participants. Uh, so people living with diabetes have a lot of questions and they live with their disease day in and day out, but during this time, their main preoccupation is whether or not they're going to be at increased risk for developing di uh, uh, infection. And right now, our data does not really support that people with diabetes are at increased risk. Uh, we, uh, people living with diabetes uh, are just like the rest of us, we're all at risk at some level or another. Uh, the more important message, though, is that we, we clearly see that people coming into hospital who do have the comorbidity of having diabetes fare more poorly. They have bigger risk of severe infection and, uh, unfortunately, even death because uh, they may have diabetes uh, along with other risk factors. So the most important message that we are trying to tell our patients is to try not to contract the virus and to use all the measures that we've heard from public health, social distancing, washing our hands, not touching our, our hands to our face in order not to introduce the virus into our body. And it's also very important for us to look after our health while we're isolated at home. And if you have diabetes, that means taking care of your sugar, uh, getting some regular exercise either within your neighborhood or within your home and to eat a healthy diet as much as possible. Uh, these are the things that we are trying to message over and over again with our patients uh, to control the factors that they can control at home uh, and to minimize their risk for contracting the virus at this time. Great summary. Maybe you would uh, be willing to repeat that in Italian. Sure. Um, I'll do my best <laughs> with my rudimentary Italian, so I apologize in advance. Um, so, uh, prima voglio ringraziare uh, uh, signora uh, Hansen e Mr. Sobera per fare questo inizio. Io mi chiamo Monique Crescenti, sono una dottoressa di endocrinology che lavora a Trillium Health Partner e anche a McKenzie Health. La gente che abita con diabete adesso hanno molti pensieri, il primo pensiero è se possono avere questo virus più facile perché hanno il diabete. Per adesso non, può, non possiamo dire che questo è vero, la gente col diabete sono come tutti gli altri, siamo tutti predisposti a prendere il virus e allora è molto importante fare tutte le misure per stare in buona salute. Abbiamo visto, ma se hai venuto in ospedale col virus, la gente col diabete 
hanno un corso più severo, uh, l'infusione più forte e uh, per qualcuna gente quelli con diabete hanno più rischio di morire di questo virus. Allora dobbiamo essere molto uh, attenti a non introdurre il virus nel corpo. Questo vuol dire a fare il social distancing, a lavare le mani e non toccare la faccia, la bocca, il naso e gli occhi con le mani. E, e altrimenti è importante controllare il diabete. Il diabete è qualcosa che puoi controllare con molte misure. Puoi uh, misurare il zucchero a casa, puoi prendere un cibo, salutare, puoi fare un po' di movimento in casa, stare in buona salute e devi provare a, a fare meglio che puoi a stare in buona salute a questo tempo. Thank you so much, Dr. Piersanti. Now, we were, we were talking as we were um, waiting to get started today about how um, much of our healthcare is now virtual. I know for some Canadians, it's been hard during the pandemic to access their healthcare provider. So what are you advising um, patients, people living with diabetes who are wondering how they can access healthcare and also take care of their diabetes on their own during COVID-19? Right, so we were talking about um, many aspects of what's called virtual care. So our diabetes um, management traditionally has been in the office and uh, in this time our health care has really transformed a lot. First off, I'd like people to understand that all their health care providers are available. They are not available perhaps face to face in their office, but you can speak to them directly by telephone. I would think that most family physician and walk-in clinics have this facility. Many physicians are also available to participate through OTN, which is Ontario Telenetwork uh, uh, program where you can do a video conference just like we're doing today and speak to your provider. We also have many, many uh, endocrinologists who are still all working full-time to look after our patients. And we are doing a combination of tele telephone visits, office visits, and, um, and tele-network uh, visits with video conferencing. I also want you to know that, that uh, Diabetes Canada has an amazing resource uh, for our patients. Their website is tremendous. They have a lot of informative videos and a lot of very good information for our patients, both with type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes, diabetes in pregnancy, and uh, pre-diabetes. Uh, they also have a very well thought out plan to make a telephone uh, program where you can phone in and speak to a diabetes nurse educator. These are individuals who are trained to look after diabetes uh, thoroughly. Uh, we, we, we really rely on these individuals and if you call 1-800-BANTING, <clears throat> this individual will call you back within a day to answer your questions about your diabetes. So all around your care is a little bit different but is completely accessible in many different ways. Thank you. Um, would you wish to repeat that? <laughs> I will try. <laughs> I will try. Um, allora, la signora che mi ha chiesto se avete aiuto, bisogno di aiuto uh, col diabete, che, che motivo puoi prendere un po' di aiuto? Allora, prima di tutto, devi sapere che i dottori di famiglia e i dottori del walk-in clinic sono tutti sono tutti uh, uh, nei uffici o in casa che aiutano la gente al telefono. Puoi chiamare e prendi una risposta. Uh, anche i dottori de, co, come uh, uh, di endocrinology siamo tutti a casa o in un ufficio che facciamo le visite col telefono o anche col video come facciamo noi oggi. Uh, anche ci sono i programmi che si chiama OTN e questo è un programma di Ontario che puoi fare un video col tuo dottore e puoi fare tutte le visite così se abiti lontano o se non puoi venire nella clinica. Eh, altrimenti Diabetes Canada ha molti programmi e informazioni sul uh, website di Diabetes Canada e hanno un numero 1800 Banting che puoi chiamare a prendere avviso del tuo diabete 
è una specialista, ti chiami indietro fra 24 ore per fare una risposta alle tue, tue domande. Allora avete molto aiuto, uh, un po' differente di prima, ma l'aiuto è sempre lì. Wonderful, thank you. Now, uh, if I may, I'd like to take a couple of moments about, uh, to talk to our viewers about how Diabetes Canada has, um, is trying to support people affected by diabetes during COVID-19. First of all, I'd like to remind everyone and reassure everyone that now more than ever, we're here to support uh, the community and those of us affected by diabetes. We know that many of us are worried about what the pandemic means for us um, who are affected by diabetes. And so we're looking for information, we're looking for resources, and Diabetes Canada is, is uh, stepping up to try to provide those in the best ways that we can. Um, Dr. Piercenti kindly mentioned our 1-800 Banting line. <clears throat> you can also email it at info at diabetes.ca. And you can access that line or that information center to find out about programs for, uh, uh, you know, perhaps cost defrail for your insulin or your diabetes supplies. Um, you can ask about other government programs that you may be eligible for, perhaps some tips on how you might apply for or meet the eligibility criteria for the disability tax credit or other programs. Um, and you can also, as Dr. Piercenti mentioned, um, ask for personalized medical advice from a diabetes educator, which um, we hope is helpful. We've also just this week introduced a new series of uh, training for people affected by type 2 diabetes. So whether you've recently been diagnosed or um, would like a refresher on how to live well with type 2 diabetes, you can access this program uh, via Diabetes Canada. Um, you can visit our website and there's information there about how to sign up for a cohort and there are cohorts starting, uh, the first one started yesterday and we'll keep them coming so that we can offer you the education that you might be struggling to get right now during physical distancing right from the comfort of your home. We have a website, diabetes.ca slash coronavirus, that is kept regularly up to date, that offers resources in the latest research on the connection between diabetes and the coronavirus. We're publishing a weekly video series called Ask the Experts, where we're responding to your questions um, on uh, via videos from uh, expert doctors and uh, other healthcare practitioners from across the country. So people can submit questions to us through our social media channels and we'll be happy to answer those. All of the previous episodes are available on our YouTube channel. <clears throat> We're working on plans right now to bring a series of virtual conferences to our community over the course of the year. We're looking at a virtual professional conference for healthcare providers whereby uh, they come together and exchange uh, best practices and the latest research on how to provide care for those of us with diabetes. We're also going to be offering some conferences uh, aimed at people with type 1, uh, aimed at kids who live with type 1 who can't unfortunately go to physical diabetes camp, decamp this year, but who will keep connected and keep engaged uh, using some uh, virtual Facebook live sessions called a daily dose of camp. Um, and, and then we're keeping healthcare providers regularly up to date on the latest research and best practices for providing virtual care by a series of webinars dedicated to healthcare providers um, uh, that, that we're offering throughout the last couple of months. We're really committed to staying connected with you to help uh, to, to ensure that we're helping you and addressing your concerns um, and, and really would encourage you to continue to reach out to us if you're experiencing any problems or you have questions because that helps us make sure that we are meeting your needs, which is our goal. So um, with, with that, I'd love to open the floor to questions. So we have a couple of questions that came in um, earlier on, and uh, I, I'd like to invite MP Sorbara maybe to answer the first one, if, if you would. The first question is um, from someone who is um, uh, living with somebody that has diabetes and is concerned now that the uh, provincial economies are starting to reopen and they're, they're being asked to return to work, 
they're concerned about how they might be um, exposing their loved one to some additional risk. And so what would your advice be for Canadians who are wondering um, what alternatives they might have to returning to work in the immediate term? And, and I'll just encourage you to unmute your mic uh, before you give us an answer. Uh, if I can answer this in, in, uh, in English, uh, in a sense that I think this is going to be becoming a going to become even a, a larger issue, uh, and you'll receive more questions on this uh, as we go along, as the as each individual province proceeds with opening up their economy at the pace that they um, best determine to do so. Uh, I think in this case here, the best advice I can I can provide to my residents or someone who has an issue, an autoimmune issue, if I can use that term, doctor. Um, and, and that is more more susceptible to to infections or so forth. Uh, is obviously speak to your employer, uh, make those accommodations, and hopefully employers. My understanding of being quite accommodative. Uh, at the same time, if uh, we are going out to public, we see a number, for example, of grocery stores asking individuals to to wear a mask, uh, to uh, practice good hygiene. I think those are the the most important things we can do individually, whether we're at home or whether we're in a work environment. Uh, the simple things of, if I can use the example of when you bring home your groceries, uh, that you clean your groceries. Uh, my wife does this and I do this with her, uh, and I never thought we'd ever have, to, ever have to do this, but this is the new normal we're in. Uh, so I think uh, on, on that level there, you, we do need to work with our employers. Uh, getting to work is going to be an issue. Uh, people getting back onto, say, for example, the, the, the subway going to downtown or the bus. Uh, so those type of issues are going to deal with wearing a mask. I, I would obviously, if I can humbly recommend that, I'm not a doctor, but I think that's, uh, that's one thing that we're seeing uh, from in jurisdictions around the world, that you are outside, you, you, you do wear a mask, uh, and wearing protective gloves to a certain extent. Uh, but I think those are the, that's the best advice I can provide someone. I have received a lot of requests on that uh, in terms of questions, especially when we rolled out the Canada Emergency Response Benefit from individuals, you know, my husband or my wife, we feel uncomfortable going to work because uh, of a pre-existing medical condition, what should we do? And, and, and uh, it's, it's a very, very tough situation because it, it impacts a uh, financial situation of, of a family as well, as well as their, their health and well-being. So it's really about working with the employer and, and seeing what accommodations can be made. And I think that's great advice, MP Sorbara. And, and I would just add for uh, those of you um, where diabetes is a concern, we have a letter available on our website, diabetes ca slash coronavirus that you can print off and share with your employer um, in order to um, encourage them to be cognizant of the additional risk that those affected by diabetes may be experiencing vis-a-vis -vis COVID-19 COVID and to encourage them to, to make accommodations. So feel free to make use of that if that can be helpful to you. Um, the second question that we had in advance, and then I see we've got a question in our chat function, which is wonderful. We'll come to that in a moment. I really encourage any of our other viewers to add your questions to the mix while we uh, answer these. Um, this question is perhaps more for Dr. Piersanti. We this this uh, this person's wondering what is the difference between the um, exposure that somebody who lives with type one diabetes compared with type two diabetes to COVID-19? What do we know about the difference in any risk exposure based on those different types? Right, so uh, if I understand the question, it's trying to see if there's a different risk level for those with living with type one versus type two in terms of immunocompromised state. Um, I, I have to say right now, we don't have enough information about that. And the reason for that is, is multiple. Whenever we look at our studies that have been published so far, they kind of lump everybody together with type 1 and type 2 that are hospitalized patients. We also don't know the burden of virus in the general uh, community. So right now, for most of uh, most endocrinologists, what all we can say is that uh, we do not believe that uh, the rates of hospitalization um, indicate that we are at increased risk when we have diabetes. We can't really go further than that. We can't subdivide it into type one or type two. Uh, and there was some concern that perhaps those who have poor glycemic control are at increased risk for poor outcomes within the hospital. 
But again, that's not even a, 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 an accurate statement because it could be just a marker of how severe the infection is that their sugars are higher in hospital. So we still have a lot to learn. I think that's the bottom line. We're not really sure. So we are still giving very um, general recommendations to everyone. So if you have type one and type two, and especially if you have a lot of complications, unfortunately, from that, those disorders, uh, that you need to be careful not to contract the virus. Aside from that, we can't really give much more information, but in time we will, we'll, we will have that information um, over the upcoming months and, and year. Fair enough, still, still lots to learn. And um, mm -hmm. I, I realize I've been remiss in not um, inviting you guys to summarize your remarks again in Italian. I wonder if Dr. Presanti just want to offer a quick summary of what you just sure, said. Sure. Uh, la domanda era se quelli con il diabete uh, tipo 1 o tipo 2 uh, hanno più rischio per prendere l'infezione e ho detto che adesso non abbiamo nessuna data che possiamo dire se questo è vero o no. Uh, adesso tutti Abbiamo detto che solo che tutta la gente sono predisposita a prendere il virus e quel, se un tipo verso un altro è più disposito non, non sappiamo adesso. Thank you. Uh, MP Sorbara, I wonder if you could just um, repeat your guidance about um, uh, the answer to your previous question um, for people who are concerned about their employment, and then I've got another question coming for you. Uh, uh, grazie, Kim. Grazie, grazie per quella domanda. Io la più sinceramente, apertamente, po che posso dire a uh, quelle persone che hanno preoccupazione per ricominciare il lavoro, per ricominciare la scuola, e veramente parla con la con la, the business manager parla con il, il, il vostro employer uh, e fa la domanda per o lavorare anche a casa parla con il manager anche per se puoi lavorare a casa per fare quella, quella domanda e quella how you say, um, accommodation accommodazioni uh, se se puoi fare è un cosa giusto però se anche per le persone che non, non hanno l'opportunità per stare a casa per fare quel lavoro, uh, per quando uh, va al lavoro per mettere la, la maschera uh, e anche le guanti, uh, quando eh, sia anche al lavoro per uh, sempre lavare le mani e, e non toccare la faccia uh, quando, quando si in, in, in open air o in outside spaces, è molto importante per, per, per fare um, queste cose. Uh, la prima cosa anche uh, prima che esce da casa, se Non ti senti bene per stare a casa, per rimanere a casa. So if you're not feeling well, please stay home uh, e, e fare quella domanda. Per, però uh, la più, più importante abbattimento che io posso dire ai uh, miei residenti e anche quelle persone che hanno le diabete è, è parla con il manager, parla con quelle persone e dite quelle che sono le preoccupazioni per voi. Uh, se avete preoccupazioni, um, farlo sapere alle persone e, e fare la comunicazione che è migliore per il vostro lavoro e migliore per la vostra sanità. Thank you. This next question is again for MP Sorbara. Uh, one of our viewers is, is wondering if you could speak to um, how much the federal government is spending on its response to, to the pandemic overall. Uh, that... I'll answer that in, in, in quickly in English. Uh, our first priority, as I said on a, on a global national uh, uh, interview this morning, was to make sure we are assisting Canadians that are enduring financial hardship at this most unique and extraordinary period of time in our history, in the world's history, in the in world's modern, modern history. So that is our first priority uh, in terms of the, the programs we've rolled out. I think the number now is up to over $150 billion as designated to be to be uh, directed to for investments into Canadian, Canadian businesses, Canadian workers, and, and now Canadian students. Uh, on the medical front, uh, a large amount of money has been directed towards uh, proper, uh, personal equipment for our doctors, our wonderful doctors and frontline, uh, frontline uh, workers. Uh, also for research that's being done in terms of uh, understanding COVID-19 better uh, for hopefully developing a, a vaccine for antibodies and for all the medical terms, which I'll leave to uh, 
the doctors. The most important thing uh, that we can do is to continue to work collaboratively with all levels of government uh, and continue to support and invest in our, um, our, our medical researchers. Uh, so in Italian, quickly, la cosa più importante per noi è investire in le famiglie, le aziende, gli studenti che hanno bisogno di aiuto in questo momento. Questo è un momento proprio straordinario in nostra, uh, in nostra storia, nel mondo, in nostra economia. E abbiamo, e il nostro governo siamo molto impegnati di fare il, il purtroppo il, uh, as much as we can scusa uh, abbiamo fare qualcosa che abbiamo bisogno e la gente hanno bisogno di aiuto we need to help people in terms of the, the direct money that's spent on, on medicines and so forth the, the tally's there uh, it's, it's quite remarkable how much money we're putting into uh, medical research and so forth. E before this, avanti di questa COVID-19, nostro governo è, è molto impegnato di investire in ricerca in, 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 in many, many, many areas. Abbiamo fatto anche la, la strategy nazionale per diabetes, la national diabetes strategy, uh, medical research in la, la science, la science, 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 scientific research, è una cosa che è molto, molto importante, importante per il nostro governo uh, prima di COVID-19. Thank you so much. Um, this is perhaps a question for, for both of you, and it's, it's um, based on some, some questions I've had from a few people in the last couple of days. Um, <clears throat> we're seeing during the epidemic that um, there's an increasing need for medical data to really understand where people are sick and how they're, they're, they're being affected by COVID-19. We're hearing in the news that people who are um, living with a lower income are perhaps at greater risk. Um, so we're seeing things that sort of speak to um, the extra impact of social determinants of health on uh, people with COVID. And we know that social determinants of health are also a big risk factor for people in terms of diabetes. We, we know that when uh, we have medical data and are able to have integrated healthcare systems, it can um, help us to respond more quickly and to ensure that the experience of Canadians across the country is, is more consistent, perhaps. Um, we, we know that when we can offer virtual care, as we've been doing recently, it can help to break down some of the barriers that some Canadians experience accessing healthcare. Those are all aspects of Diabetes Canada's Diabetes 360 nationwide strategy that we're recommending uh, be funded by the federal government. And we've been really pleased to have received uh, the endorsement of the Finance Committee during the time when MP Sarvaro is sitting on that committee, thank you. Uh, and also from the Health Committee who studied the matter last year. We're hoping that as things start to get back to normal, we'll be able to look towards that. I guess I just would wonder if, if either of you could give a brief comment on um, maybe Dr. Percenti from a medical perspective, what might some of those things mean for you and your patients? And then MP Sorbara, how given what we're experiencing right now, might an approach that looks at integrating healthcare systems help us uh, nationally, not just with diabetes, but perhaps with all forms of chronic disease? So I'll start, if I may, with Dr. Percenti. Sure. So I think this is a very valuable um, comment. Um, we have now seen uh, over the last month or so how uh, our care can be transformed into something better. Uh, in, in the past, our, our patients, uh, we have all walks of life. It was all um, so socioeconomic uh, levels uh, and all sort of family dynamics and uh, their own health, uh, health issues. Uh, looking after diabetes is a, a can be a very complicated uh, negotiation between all those factors in their life. Uh, and the more we can understand our patient's situation and uh, communicate with them effectively, uh, the better they can do. So it is really very interesting that now that we have virtual care uh, more readily available to us, that we can make contact with patients at their own convenience. Uh, we can also involve family members a lot more easily because they are there in the home with them. We can have a better sense of uh, what their living circumstances are when we're able to have some of these discussions online. Um, 
And so I would just say that uh, social determinants of the health are well recognized. They, they are very important to, to address uh, with the physician and the care team. And anything we can do to enhance our understanding of what our patients are, are experiencing will only end up helping them in, in the long run with their health. Did you wish to repeat any of that? Yeah, so uh, uh, Senor, uh, Senora Maquesto, um, que, que, cosa, que cosa possiamo fare meglio in futuro con, uh, uh, um, con uh, i nostri uh, patients? Perché la gente che abbiamo visto hanno molti problemi nella, nel, nelle sue vite che fanno impatto nella salute. Uh, quando, uh, quando guadagnano, che lavoro fanno, cosa c'è nella famiglia che è un po' di stress, tutte queste robe impattano uh, come va il diabete. Allora quando noi abbiamo, possiamo fare un po' di contatto con la persona in casa, che è conveniente con virtual care o che altre misure, eh, noi possiamo aiutare meglio perché abbiamo visto che questo è un tipo di medicina, un tipo di servizio che è molto utile. E se noi possiamo fare queste visite più spesso è un, un verso che aiuta la gente, sta, è, è conveniente, eh, può darsi facciamo meglio a guardare il diabete. Thank you. MP Sorbara, over to you. Thoughts on how that might be part of a recovery program? Well, um, recovery program, interesting. Um, I think right now for our vulnerable communities and, and however you wanted to, to determine how to define vulnerable and we know what the social determinants of health are, uh, la cosa più importante is, is the government to uh, dedicate resources to areas where um, for me, in my role as a member of parliament, I say to my team, uh, we need to provide as much information to our residents as possible. Think of us as an information funnel in, in the government, uh, obviously, uh, to give money for research into various, uh, into various uh, diseases and, and, and uh, issues that Canadians are dealing with, um, you know, be it mental health funding, uh, be it a national diabetes strategy. Uh, be it into science research chairs, into our teaching hospitals, into our research hospitals, or for fundamental research, that's the most important things is providing those tools and resources on an ongoing basis so that research can be made. And obviously reaching out to those um, communities or individuals uh, who don't have uh, access to all the tools and resources. Uh, we know that uh, with education, uh, one of the, the more education you have, the better you tend to do on many, many social uh, determinants of, uh, of health level. Uh, in terms of even simply from your, your job uh, experience to uh, your long mortality, uh, if I can use that word. Uh, so it's very, very important. Um, uh, in, in Italian, uh, if, if I can comment on this, per noi la, la, la cosa più importante, importante se uh, abbiamo portato le, le informazioni a tutte le residenti che la cosa più importante per la lo, loro vita, per, uh, per capire che il, what, the best food is to eat or recommending on, on, on what diet uh, to recommending what resources that are out there available for per tutte le persone che, che, che siamo um, dando a, and what we what information we're providing sorry my, my, my brain uh, just had a froze there for a second um, uh, what uh, what resources we we are offering to our residents uh, le persone anche in in in, in my writing to, to sono anche assai assai anziani. There's a lot of retired people in my riding, uh, that older generation of Italian Canadians that, that helped build this country. And for me, uh, providing informazioni a queste persone è la cosa più importante per me che posso fare uh, in, in mio lavoro di deputato livello federale. Anche in, in Ottawa, uh, per me è una cosa, io ce l'ho una obbligazione per uh, advocating for resources to be directed to the diabetes, uh, diabetes Canada, or for juvenile diabetes research, uh, in whatever level and whatever uh, issue there is, and and questa è una cosa proprio proprio molto importante. In in Italian, diffuso delle informazioni, just to get that information out, uh, is the most important thing I can do for my residents in helping them uh, live a, a better, uh, more enriching uh, life uh, life life that they can. 
Thank you very much. Uh, I see that we are getting towards the, the bottom of our time together. I've got um, uh, one comment and one more question from uh, one of our viewers that I'll offer. And then I'll also invite um, our, 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 our experts here to make any closing remarks that you'd like to before I wrap things up. So the comment, and, and thank you to our viewer, is that the federal government is taking care of all people, including businesses, workers, students, farmers, etc. And it's really great help during the pandemic to the people. So she's thank or he or she is thanking the government. Uh, and I would really echo their thanks to uh, the federal government and, and all governments for all of the incredible work that you're doing during this time. Thank you so much. The question is, uh, and, and I think, you know, we, we've touched on it, but perhaps just as a quick summary, Dr. Piercenti, um, what are the, the, the question is what precautions should uh, diabetic patients follow during COVID-19. So um, maybe just a quick summary of that in both languages, if you would. Sure. Uh, so during this time, we are asking a few things of uh, our patients living with diabetes. Uh, the first is uh, to try to maintain good sugar control uh, and to use uh, their glucometer or testing device uh, often to make sure that they're in control. Uh, if you have the ability to also monitor your blood pressure from time to time uh, and to alert your physician if you see any significant changes and to check your feet and this can be done either yourself or a partner or putting a mirror on the floor and checking your feet regularly to look for any signs of infection or injury. The other thing too is to make sure that you have adequate supplies of your medication if you're living with type 1 to make sure you have a ketone testing uh, kit um, and to have uh, a preparedness plan for uh, the events when you have low sugars. Uh, and to, lastly, to have uh, uh, what's called a sick day management plan, to have an understanding maybe by speaking to your healthcare provider about how to manage sick days, depending on what medications you're using and how to adjust them so you can remain safe. The last thing we want is for people to end up in hospital because either their sugars are too low or too high or because they have become unwell and their medications have not been adjusted properly. Great, and uh, once more in Italian. Okay. Allora, uh, la domanda è cosa possiamo fare se uh, siamo a casa e abbiamo il diabete? Prima roba è per uh, controllare il zucchero con le macchine che avete a casa, quello che pungono il, il, i diti o altri che sono sui bracci o sul stomaco. E, se puoi a misurare la pressione ogni tanto, vedere che è controllato e per guardare i piedi, i piedi si possono guardare con gli occhi o qualcuno che abita con te possono vedere i piedi o puoi usare, usare un specchio uh, sul pavimento e guardi sotto i piedi per una ferite. Eh, puoi avere, devi avere tutte le medicine a casa uh, e uh, se avete il type 1 diabetes uh, devi avere ketone test strips per, uh, per misurare il ketone se stai male e l'ultimo devi capire che qualche medicina si devono fermare o abbassare se stai male. Questo si chiama sick day management e questo è qualcosa che può darsi, puoi parlare col tuo dottore eh, come si fa se stai male a casa. Non vogliamo che la gente arrivi in ospedale perché il zucchero è troppo alto, troppo basso o perché le medicine sono troppo forti. Allora puoi discutere tutto questo con i vostri dottori. Great, thank you. Now, um, before we wrap up for the day, I wonder, MP Sorbara, would you like to offer any kind of closing remarks or last thoughts for our viewers? Well, uh... Absolutely. I was going to say merci beaucoup. Gra grazie, grazie Kim per uh, vostro, uh, vostra ospitalità oggi. Vuoi dire alla uh, dottoressa Presante, uh, lei parla molto bene l'italiano, voglio ringraziare uh, 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 tutti le, i, i tuoi i seguimenti oggi, o your, or your advice uh, per tutti gli ascoltatori, anche per il, voi, il tuo lavoro. Uh, dottoressa, you're on the front lines and you're helping patients out. Uh, in beautiful Mississauga and across, across the GTA. Uh, vorrei ringraziare ancora Kim, uh, la dottoressa Presante e tutti gli ascoltatori oggi. 
il nostro governo federale continua a sopportare i, tutti i canadesi affettati da questa malattia di diabete anche durante questo periodo di Covid-19 e anche dopo uh, di, quando when we hopefully uh, go to some sort of normality uh, dopo the, the Covid-19 whenever that normality may return uh, io per me voglio dire che il nostro governo siamo uh, a vostra disposizione io come deputato sono sempre disponibile i miei uh, residenti qui a Vaughan, a Vaughan Woodbridge eh, lo so tante persone in nostra comunità e anche uh, la comunità dei South Asians and, uh, uh, stanno, uh, hanno una battaglia contro la diabete uh, uh, they have to watch their sugar levels they have to check that, check that every day and watch what they eat è una cosa molto importante di, di sempre uh, promuovere il cibo sano uh, e anche uh, promuovere uh, un uh, healthy lifestyle Uh, è, è sempre molto 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 importante e speriamo che venga l'estate lo so che il tempo oggi non è tanto, non è tanto buono qui a, a in Bonn uh, però quando viene l'estate il tempo è il migliore tempo che tutte le residenti hanno, vanno per un passaggiata uh, per fare fisica e some good physical exercise uh, which uh, is one of the good indicators of good healthy lifestyle and good health So, per, per questo voglio uh, finire adesso qui e, uh, uh, e di nuovo uh, ti ringrazio assai Kim, uh, dottoressa Pirasante, ti ringrazio assai per le vostre uh, parole oggi che sono molto importanti per tante tante residenti in, in my riding di, di Vaughan Woodbridge. Grazie e un buon saluto, buon saluto. Thank you. Dr. Pirasante, any last comments for our viewers? Well, I mean, really, I just want to thank Diabetes Canada for taking on these initiatives. It's a tremendous effort, uh, and uh, th these type of dialogues are very important. I want to thank uh, Mr. Sorbera. Listen, the government has done a tremendous job. They have risen to the occasion compared to other countries and other jur jurisdictions. We are doing a tremendous job. Um, And I can only, you know, commend that effort. It's it's been really heartwarming to see the government step up for us. Uh, in terms of our patients, listen, there's a lot of things that are not in our control, but there are many things that are in our control. And if uh, if you're living with diabetes and you feel like you need some help, there are many places you can get it. Uh, we are all here for you, and uh, in one way or another, you can reach out, and we will do our best for you. Um, so that's my message. Okay, great. In Italian? Yep. Uh, volevo volevo uh, gra uh, dare un, un, un grazie a Kim e Diabetes Canada per fare questo inizio. Uh, è molto, molto, lei è molto brava a fare tutti questi programmi per noi e Diabetes Canada è molto forte adesso. Eh, voglio ringraziare il governo, Mr. Sobera e tutto il governo che hanno fatto una, un, un, un buon efforto a aiutare tutti i canadieni, canadesi in questo tempo. So, sono molto contenta di tutto quello che hanno fatto. Eh, per la gente che abita con il diabete lo so che è molto uh, stressful adesso, ma siamo tutti qui per, per voi e se hai bisogno puoi... Uh, uh, prendere aiuto dall'ufficio di Mr. Sorbera, dai, dotto, dai dottori e dai Diabetes Canada. Non siete soli e possiamo aiutarti. Grazie, Dr. Persanti, grazie, MP Sorbara. Thank you so much to you both. I'm so grateful for your time and your expertise. Um, I, I'm sure that uh, MP Sorbara would be really pleased for any of our viewers to reach out to his office if you've got any questions about the federal government and its programs and supports. Um, Diabetes Canada would be thrilled to have you reach out to us at 1-800-BANTING or info at diabetes.ca. Um, and, and really just, um, we really are all in this together and uh, Diabetes Canada wants to be as supportive of our community as we possibly can. So thank you all and uh, be well.